If your mornings start like this and your nights end like this, it may be time to give screens a rest. Children appear to love the bright colorful screens in front of them, but what does research show? Devices distract children from their play and don't provide educational benefit. Excessive use is associated with behavioral issues and disrupted sleep, and the biggest concern is the harm that occurs when screens replace their time with you. I interviewed Ellen Dorlette to discuss infant toddler media use and parenting strategies. I'm an early childhood educator for the past 30 years, and I now work for Seed and So, which is based in social emotional learning. Are screens okay for my child? It depends. <laughs> it depends on many things. It depends on age. It depends on really the content. It depends on what the screen is. Um, so I think there's a lot of pieces that play into that. For me, FaceTiming my grandchildren is like mm -hmm. something I'm so happy about. So I think in some of those aspects, it's great. At what age are screens appropriate? So under two, infants, I don't think that there's really a place for screens. Things are moving too fast. And I mean, my advice was always like, turn the seat around if they're sitting in a seat or put them, you know, out of sight of the television. But um, yeah, that's hard. And then, I mean, I think as children get older into their preschool years, you also have to consider like how many screens there are. <laughs> And, you know, what are we going to do? Like, are we going to give them an hour of TV time and an hour of iPad time? And, oh, here's my phone to keep you busy. Like, we have to, like, make those boundaries mm -hmm. and stick to them, even when it's hard. And I also think we need to consider each child. Are there any educational benefits to television? I think that there can be, yes. You know, I think there's some, you know, shows for children that are really amazing. The messages are great, um, but I think also under two, they're not really soaking in that message. Mm -hmm. Putting that aside, I think also screens are used because sometimes parents just need a break. Mm -hmm. They just need a break and I, that does not go like unnoticed. But, you know, if that becomes that sort of norm mm -hmm. that I feel tired and burned out and going to turn on the TV, like what other ways can we? help ourselves in that situation. How can I reduce my child's meltdowns around media? If they're feeling sad, the answer is not like, do you want to watch a movie? It's if they're old enough, can they talk about it? And if they're young, like, can we take some deep breaths together? Can we, do you want to go do some jumping jacks at Seed? And so we, you know, talk a lot about pre-teaching, like, you can watch a show, but as soon as it's over, we're going to turn the TV off and then we're going to go outside and play. So what exactly should parents be doing? You know, we have to set up some good parameters and model what we hope that they will do as they grow up. And, you know, that's one thing parents need to do is put their phone down and just have that, you know, connection. Young children learn much more from a real life model than from a screen. But this can be challenging, especially for busy parents. To reduce harm, we can start by turning off background TV and reducing screen time to short durations. Even better, limit infant media use to FaceTime only. By replacing iPads with interactions, we improve our children's behavior, sleep patterns, and understanding of the world.